is risen. Happy Easter. You know, uh, our methods of celebration may look a lot different this year, but the reason we're celebrating hasn't changed. We're still celebrating an empty grave. We're still celebrating our Jesus, who is very much alive, who has very much paid the entire debt of our sins. So to this year, even though the Easter egg hunts may have not happen like normal, even though the family dinners may have not happened like usually, we still celebrate a very risen Savior. In Luke chapter 24, starting at verse 1, we read these words. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but they, uh, then when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. You know, we've been guilty, I believe, sometimes looking for Jesus in places that he's not. But this morning, I don't want everyone to miss out on the magnitude of this moment by making the opposite mistake of this, by not realizing that God is with us right now, by not being aware that Jesus is present with us right now. So even though we're not getting to gather in a church building on this Sunday morning, we're still celebrating that same Jesus. We're still celebrating that our God said it is finished and he was resurrected. We're still celebrating that we get to praise him today. Will you join us today? Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for this day. We thank you that we still have a reason to celebrate even though circumstances aren't what we'd want this morning, Father God. You're still powerful. You're still bigger than our circumstances. You're still worthy to be praised. So Jesus, today, let us fix our eyes upon you and let us celebrate the risen Savior. It's in the holy, precious name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Join me as we celebrate our risen Savior.
Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. 
For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome a day that's drawing near when in this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear and my faith shall be my eyes Jesus 
wonderful time of worship we've had this morning as we think about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, during this time, it's been difficult to not do some of the normal things that we've done because we've been apart. Uh, I can truly say with all my heart, I really miss meeting together with you. Uh, but I know that our hearts are joined together and our spirits are joined together because of the Spirit of Christ. And as we worship this morning, I just sense God speaking to us and moving in our lives wherever we may be. And I praise God that He is so powerful that He can do that. Uh, you know, I do, I do miss the little things that, uh, that we do normally in a, in a time that, that we're not quarantined or we're not in our homes. Uh, I, I believe that I miss going to Walmart. I know I'm not like most people. Going to Walmart really doesn't bother me too much. But when I go, I just want to go in and I want to get what I need and get out. Um, I, I consider that kind of the, uh, the hunter kind of mentality of shopping. Um, other people have the mentality of the gatherer type of shopping where they go in and they, they kind of make their way through the aisles and see if there's something that they need and then they walk through another aisle and then they pick it up and then they carry it with them several aisles and then they put things in a different place because they decided they didn't want it and then and sometimes they get to the counter and realize they got to go back and so that's just not my way of shopping. But it may be yours, and that's okay. I just would rather go in and get what I need and get out and, uh, and enjoy it. But, but see, you know, some people are kind of upset during this Easter time that, that they're missing out on the uh, hunting for Easter eggs. They wait all year long to find this moment where they participate in somebody hiding something, and then they've got to go find it, and then the joy of finding that. You know, I, I think that Walmart and I have that kind of relationship throughout the year. Uh, I, I go and find something I really enjoy, and then, uh, then the next time I go in, they've moved it, and I have to go find it, and it takes me some time to go find what I'm actually looking for. When I get it, I rejoice, and then I get out. Well, over this time where we are at our homes, where we're sheltered in place, um, I'll just say that Christy and Micaiah are now home, and she's kind of continued this game uh, that Walmart and I have enjoyed for uh, the, the whole year. It, 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 I like to call it affectionately the, the home version of where did you move my stuff? Because I put it down in one place, and then somehow it migrates. It moves to another place, and it, it, it may just be five minutes. I've placed something there on the counter, and then all of a sudden it's gone. And there's confusion. There's uh, a bit of frustration. There's uh, a wondering what just happened. Uh, because when you put something down and you come back to that place, you expect to find it there. And you know what? I think that in our passage of Scripture this morning, that frustration is multiplied. And the fact that the disciples knew that Jesus died on the cross, that he was placed in the tomb, and yet when they went to that tomb... On that resurrection morning, Jesus was not there. They were a bit confused, probably a little frustrated. But in all of this, God was working his masterful, wonderful plan of salvation for us. So this morning, if you will take your copy of God's Word and look at John chapter 20, we're going to begin reading in verse 1 through verse 18. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. And so Peter and the other disciples went forth and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter, and he came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And so Simon Peter also came following him and entered the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the face cloth which had been on his head, not lined with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had first come to the tomb then also entered, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. And so the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping, and so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. 
And she saw two angels in white sitting at one at the head of the at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will, I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came, announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he has said these things to her. Wow, what an experience that that was, the the morning of the resurrection that changed everything, that changed everything for all time, that Jesus Christ, as he willingly went to the cross, died and was placed in that tomb. For the disciples, it seemed like all was lost. Their hope, who had been walking with them, who had shown them miracles, who had showed them amazing things, was now gone. They could not fathom what had taken place. Jesus many times tried to prepare them for this moment. He tried to help them and prepare them so that they wouldn't Uh, be overwhelmed by the grief and the despair and hopelessness that they were going to face when they could not see him physically anymore. And yet, he said, you will not see me, and then you will see me. And boy, that joy that is going to come into your life is going to be amazing. And so, as the disciples came to this place, they came to that frustrating place, that place of, of confusion, And so I want to share with you a couple of things that that are reminders for us today that the disciples experienced. First of all, the disciples surmised that the people did something devious, that, that someone had taken his body away. But God did something supernatural. People can be blamed or they can be given the responsibility of their own decisions, of their own actions. And yet, so many times, we will blame people for things when in reality, God may be doing something supernaturally that we don't know about. Not every situation turns out the way that we think it should. Not every situation is exactly how we would have done things. But if we are spiritually aware, we can see that God can do something supernaturally in ways that we don't see. I think about the, the prophet who stood with his servant, and, and they were surrounded, and, and he, the servant was so concerned that they were surrounded by an enemy, and yet the prophet said, I, open his eyes, Lord. And all of a sudden, the servant could see the angels standing with them in that moment. There was something supernatural that was taking place around them, and yet they could not physically see it, but could be spiritually discerned by those who were listening to the voice of God, to the Spirit of God. I think today, as we think about our circumstances, there's a lot that's going on that we don't know. There's there's an enemy that is invisible that we're concerned about in this virus. And yet, we need to be concerned about the other spiritual enemies that are around, that are there to tempt us and to lead us down paths that will lead to destruction, There are spiritual uh, warfares that are going on around us, and yet so many times we don't even recognize them. If we look at our circumstances, let's ask God to pray and, and pray, God, show us what you are doing in this moment. Show us what we don't know and what we can't understand at this point. I love that the scripture is so honest about the disciples. They said, as of yet, they did not understand the scriptures. As of yet, they were going to understand at a future point. They were going to have a better understanding of what Jesus Christ did in that fact that he was no longer in the tomb. And yet they could not understand in that moment 
that gives my heart hope and it gives my heart peace to know that sometimes as I think about things and as I don't understand why things happen the way they do, that I can trust God that he knows what he's doing. That, that I can trust God that he's going to see me through. And that at some point in the future, it may not be a day, it may not be a week, it may be when I get to heaven, that God's going to give me an understanding that I can praise him because I trusted him in those moments. And he worked out something amazing that I didn't even know. Those disciples were, were upset and they, they, they left. They went back to their homes. They went back to the place where they can try to make sense of it all. And I think in our homes right now, uh, things are not quite what we think that they should be. And yet we have an opportunity to regroup. We have an opportunity to reevaluate. And hopefully we can see things come out better than, we, than when we went in. I, I was talking to somebody the other day. I said, I hope that things get back to normal. And then I stopped myself and thought, no, really, I hope they're better than normal when we come out of this. I, I pray that we are better for the experience, that maybe that our homes will be more loving, that our families will be more connected, that our love for one another will grow greater through these times, and, and that we can worship God greater. Maybe there's somebody that needs to be saved. Maybe there's somebody that needs to call to the Lord. And this is the opportunity. He's taken a lot of things away for you to focus on Him during this time. So I pray that we come out better on the other side. Even though we've got to weather this storm and we are in confusion, we, we don't know what's taking place next. But the disciples, they, they experienced that idea that somebody did something devious, but they also expected something that wasn't true, that wasn't a reality when they came to the tomb. The disciples expected the tomb to be occupied, but the grave could not hold Jesus. They thought that there was going to be a body in that tomb, even though they got word that, that uh, the, the ladies had come to that tomb that morning and they, had, and they said he was not there. They had to go see for themselves. Now, in this passage, it talks about the disciple that the, the Jesus loved, and that is really a, a comment to who John is in this passage. John was there. He's writing this and, and remembering all that took place, but John was there that morning. He was with Peter, and, and, and John ran ahead of Peter, and he ran on uh, before him because he wanted to know. He, he, his heart probably was pounding to know if Jesus was truly in that tomb or not. There was an expectation that Jesus was going to be there. And yet when he got there, there was nothing in the tomb except for the linens. And there's an expectation, I believe, that people have of what God is going to do in this time and, and what God is going to uh, say to our hearts some people don't have an expectation of even what God is going to do. But let me tell you, whatever expectations we have, God can supersede all of those expectations. He's going to do something greater than we can imagine. You see, I, I think that it is representative of many people today that, that they think that they can put God in a box. They, they want to put God in the tomb. They want to put Jesus in that tomb, and yet Jesus is so much greater than a, a place. He is so much greater than a creation that he made and we try to put God in a box we're going to be surprised because God is going to exceed our expectations and what we think God is going to do in our lives I, I thank God that he has done so many miraculous and wonderful things in my life he's worked out circumstances when I, I couldn't see what was going to happen next and I've learned to trust him over the years and I've seen in times when I, I haven't seen the results of prayers that I have prayed. And I've still come away and said, I trust you, God. Because your love for me is so great, I know that you have my best interest in your heart. That's tough to do at times. That's difficult when we don't see the answers and we don't know why. But we can trust the heart of God. Sometimes we say, God, if you don't do this in my life or do that in my life, I'm not going to trust you anymore. And yet, Jesus has done the greatest thing for us that he could ever do, in that he gave his life for us. We have, we have seen the greatest demonstration of love that has ever been done in this entire world when Jesus Christ 
willingly went on that cross so that he would save us and could provide the sacrifice for our sins. An innocent man, 100% God, 100% man, he died for us. And yet we would have the audacity to come back to him and say, Jesus, you haven't done enough for me, for me to be all in and and for me to give you my all or for me to trust you or for me to love you yet we look at the cross and realize he did everything for us he owes us nothing god is so much bigger than our box that we want to put him in he's so much greater than we could imagine his love is so much deeper than we've experienced and yet we forget that so often We need to get rid of our expectations and say, Jesus, I want to pray that you do something in my life, but, but go greater than my prayers. Be bigger than my dreams. Show me more than what I even want that you desire for my life. Because I promise you, he has so much more that he has that we can think or imagine. So we can go to God and say, God, it's all in your hands. I trust you. Those disciples learned a lesson in that day. They did not understand at that moment, but they would understand as Scripture came back to their hearts and to their memories. As they began to talk to Jesus a little later on, they began to realize what was actually happening in those moments. John recalling this at this time, and yet there was so much more to come. There was so much more that he had in store for them, and that yet this was the moment that changed history. The resurrection of Christ has changed history. Paul even said it. He said, if there wasn't the resurrection, then we would be most foolish of men to be pitied. But it wasn't just about what happened on the cross when the payment was made, but it's also about the resurrection of Jesus Christ that changes everything. God has definitely taken a box and exploded it. He has has gone far beyond its boundaries, and, and, and that grave could not hold Jesus. I've said it before, and I believe it even now, that that stone that was rolled away was not for Jesus to get out. It was for us to see in. There's nothing that could hold Jesus in. And yet he provided that stone to be rolled away so those ladies and that, those disciples could go to the tomb and realize that Jesus was no longer dead. He was alive. But as the disciples surmised all these evil things that people had done and expected the tomb to be occupied, the the disciples also experienced the event as defeat in that moment. They experienced it as defeat, but the resurrection was a celebration for all time. A celebration. In those moments that we feel most defeated, it might be the opportunity that God is getting the most glory. Because we can't say in ourselves that we could do anything. Those disciples were, were in a sense, helpless. They didn't know what happened. They didn't know if somebody had taken him. They didn't know what took place. And they they just felt in that moment a, a, a despair, defeat. And yet, we're looking back at it years later and see that moment as a time of celebration. We see it as a moment of victory. They could not see it at that moment, but yet, in a little while, they would. And I believe that in our hearts and lives, we're going to see that God is doing something now in our lives that we just can't see it. We don't understand it. We might be in confusion or maybe even feel defeated in this moment. Our, Our lives have been turned upside down. And yet, in this very moment, in this time in history, God is still doing something amazing. He's still doing something incredible. And we need to seek after Him and His face, seek after His ways. Because that's the only way that we're going to make sense of this life and what's to come next. Oh, the joy that we're in the hearts of the disciples. I mean, think about it. The disciples who were running scared because the Roman government had come to arrest Christ, even Peter, denying Jesus three times, are completely different disciples after the resurrection, after the coming of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1. They are completely different. Peter, 
who once denied Christ three times says, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, let me tell you something, guys. You've got it all wrong. Let me tell you what Jesus did for you. Peter is now the one with boldness. He's the one who is saying, stay strong in the fight. Stay strong in those times of temptation. He's the one who's saying, it's all worth it to follow Christ. There is a change in those disciples after the resurrection, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, that changed them forever, and they did not back down. They went full force, 120%, for the things of God, building the kingdom of God, speaking the word of God. Because things were different. Because Jesus was alive. You know, I believe that Jesus is still alive today, as Brother Corey mentioned. It's, it's not about thinking about when he was resurrected back then, but he is with us now. God with us. He is Emmanuel. He is with us in our homes. He is with us as we, we wait this thing out at home or, or wherever we are, having to go into those dangerous situations because of this unknown enemy, this, this invisible enemy that is physically affecting many people. But I pray that we would be on guard of that spiritual enemy that is continually around us as well. And we would take serious this warfare that we're in because God is doing something amazing. This morning is a time for celebration. Not just for back then and remembering what happened at the resurrection of Christ so many years ago. But it's about the the truth that Jesus Christ is alive today. He is alive in our hearts. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And in that triumphal entry as Jesus came into into the city, as they celebrated him on that Palm Sunday, that your King is coming, he is coming again. And we need to be ready. We need to, to do that which pleases God, even in these moments that we're separated. The celebration we're going to have when we're gathered together is going to be like no other. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to sharing our lives together again. But in this time, let's focus our hearts and our minds in God's word. Again, he says that they didn't understand the scriptures yet. Maybe we need to get back in the scriptures and spend more time there to understand what's going on now. And then when we understand that and God shows us and loves us and cares for us and reveals those things as we go forward, we'll even know better what God wants for our lives individually and as his church. I pray that God is going to speak to your heart this morning. You may need to come to know him as your Lord and Savior for the very first time. I pray that you would ask him to come into your life. We have resources on our website that you can go to and and, and there's a prayer that you can pray and, and ask God to come into your life. But my prayer this morning as we read this scripture because of the the message it has for Christians, it is for us today who are already those followers of Christ Jesus to be encouraged, to have hope, to have trust, and to be bold in the gospel, in the word of God as we go forward. Even in moments where we don't know what's going to happen next, we can always trust God because he has overcome. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are now overcomers. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus who saved us. Jesus, you are alive. Jesus, you are our Lord and you love us and we love you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would pour out your blessings on your church this morning. And I pray, God, that we will see great, wonderful revival take place. We look forward to what you're going to do. You're moving in ways that we cannot see, and Lord, we thank you that you, in your infinite wisdom, are working out things that, that we will yet to praise you for. We will yet to, to, to lift up the name of Jesus because we haven't seen the fullness of what you're doing yet. But God, we can trust you every step of the way until we get to that place. Heavenly Father, may our hearts rejoice this morning. May we celebrate the truth of your word, and may we go forward in the name of Christ because you are our Lord and Savior. It is in Jesus' name that we pray.